I'll be the presider today, um, and I am going to give the first presentation too. The um, presentation is going to be um, about a surface uh, drainage tile field day that we held in Michigan last August. And I just want to share that briefly with you, and some of the people that actually spoke at that and gave the technical presentations will be with us here today. My moral of my story is uh, don't wait around for the right answers, that we can start dealing with liquid manure on tile drain lands right now uh, with what we know. Um, I am not an expert on tile drainage, um, but I understand gravity. And I understand that the purpose of drainage is to drain liquids from the soil. So that's probably my depth of, of that information. But I want to, the moral of the story is that we don't have to know everything before we can start raising awareness to our farmers and having them already start down this path. Okay. Um, I want to tell you just how we kind of got started with this. Um, my, my past role when I did this uh, field day, I was with uh, Michigan State University Extension, and a team of us worked with a farmer to pull this field day off with the local industry. Um, and I'm no longer in that role, so um, I, can, I can claim that I don't know anything about drainage. If I was still in that extension role, I'd have to know something to be up here in front of you. Um, but, uh, first of all, I was at a meeting one night. We all know how we begrudgingly go to night meetings, and then unintended things happen that make it certainly worth our while. Went to a night meeting one night and run, ran into a farmer who said, hey, by the way, the Michigan Land Improvement Contractors Association, which I call them the tile drainage guys in our state, want to do a field day. They do one every year to just show the uh, design and installation and proper um, management of, of drainage systems, and they want to do it on my farm this year. And by the way, I was wondering if you and Extension would like to team that up with, with liquid manure management. And I thought, wow, if any of you have ever tried to plan a field event, finding the farmer and the willingness and the cooperation is the stumbling block that happens. So I'm saying, OK, this is a golden opportunity. My next thought was, this guy's got to be nuts. Does he know what kind of can of worms he's opening? Um, he did. He is in a county contiguous to an area that has been a real hotbed for liquid manure and issues with drainage release. So he knew darn well what he was getting into. He also knew that he wanted to be proactive and help show both farmers and the public that we can manage these systems and be responsible in that, that um, location. The other thing I thought real quick was I really want to retire from extension and didn't want to stay around for that, but the golden opportunity was just too good to miss out. So what we did, um, we had a combination of tile drainage installation and design uh, the fun stuff that I call for farmers, the kicking tires. We had five different vendors that are members of the uh, Land Improvement Contractors Association. They wanted to show the installation of mains and laterals and uh, proper design and GPS um, way of doing this and doing it correctly. So that was their motive for this. And when the farmer wanted to team this up with uh, liquid manure management, I got thinking about that and I thought, well, I want to look at two things. Prevention that never even gets to the drainage system. I think uh, sometimes that gets overlooked. And then when you have soils and conditions that that, that is just going to uh, um, be an issue you think you're going to have to deal with, then we'll also look at some things that we have out there in technology to um, deal with that when it does get to the drainage system. And my overall philosophy was to show farmers options. I don't think there is one right answer out there yet. Um, and the iterations of soil type, soil moisture, weather conditions from minute to minute, day to day, week to week, year to year, are just too great uh, to really have, I think, that exact solution. So I wanted to present options. And again, I'm kind of from sandy soil, so drainage wasn't uh, second nature to me. And even the farm that we held this on, if you are from true heavy clay soils, you probably wouldn't have perceived this farm as is, um, um, really that uh, urgent for drainage. So we know there is just a broad array of soil types and, um, and, and drainage systems that are going in out there. So from the prevention standpoint, I want to look at rates and calibration. I'm an agronomist more by training in the manure management area and think that the first thing we start with is proper rate and calibration at an agronomic level, and that will take care of a lot of problems. Now then when it comes to drainage systems and liquid manure streams, whether it's from a beef feedlot runoff or a dairy farm with wash water, we then are dealing with a liquid stream that the agronomic rate is not correct anymore for what the soil can take in, hold, and assimilate. So it's those systems that we're a little more concerned with. 
but we start with those to take care of our issues. Wanted to look at maybe some cover crops. Uh, we have a slurry seed, and I'll show you a picture of tillage options. There's a lot of options out there that farmers can do to make sure it never even gets there. Then we want to move on to look at things like water control devices, sub-irrigation, bioreactors, and other management practices. But the goal, again, was that there's options, and I think the farmers are going to have to learn on their soil type with their manure streams how to best deal with this and probably not wait around for us to uh, develop some web-based tool that they can go find the right answer every morning. So that was my premise for that. We do know that there's a lot of tile drainage in the nation. Uh, we cannot overlook the, the productivity that that has brought to the Midwest. When you stop and think about it, probably drainage, hybrid seed corn development, and commercial fertilizers, probably the three big things that have really made the Midwest Corn Belt um, uh, what it is. So there's just no denying how important and vital that is and the productivity is added. But again, when it comes to these liquid manure streams, uh, we also need to be vigilant with that. So this was a joint partnership. My understanding is that most states have a land improvement contractors association called LICA usually. Um, so you may have those in your states. I'm sure any of the, the heavily drained areas have those associations. You can work with them. Um, and they were willing to work with us on this. We had the farmer's field. We had the extension component. We also had very uh, good local and uh, state support from our agribusiness from this. The farm couple that hosted this are well connected on state boards of directors and agriculture, community things. Um, so we, we could really pull all of those resources together and pull it off uh, the way we wanted to. From a logistics standpoint, we obviously picked a wheat field. Um, that we were hoping we'd have uh, harvested usually by mid-July and pull this event off in early August. So we were working on that. At the end, when the uh, contractors had done this before, their goal, they do on-site installation. So even though there's five different vendors running, they have designed the drainage for the whole field, and everybody comes out with different pieces of equipment. And when the two-day event is over with, this 80 acres will be totally drained, and the farmer will, will have that accomplished. Uh, we did probably get about probably 800 people over a two-day period. And I want to remind you that we did a drainage field day during the drought. So I guess the, see, there are other things that can just take care of your drainage issues also. But I will say, um, I think we still had water running out the end of the tile, which still was amazing for two days when uh, we were working on some of the systems. Mostly uh, tile drainage installers came to visit this. Um, some farmers, but there's an awful lot of farmers that said, we just assume let our tile drain guys figure this out. Um, but again, the awareness um, of the manure management brought some other people in. Just a quick overview of what we did. We had a big field. We had to go out there in, in February and kind of plot off where we were going to go, a tent, um, static area for displays, um, charge for display area to help pay off the event, educational tents. Um, and we had everything laid out here that we could achieve. The wood chip bioreactor was installed on site, could see it going in. Uh, we did a little land shaping um, and water control devices and then just regular types of drainage. So the field lent itself to all of this. The one thing that we really didn't cover was the surface water inlet type of drainage system, which is more of a one-off issue um, before it gets down there. The field didn't quite lend itself to that. And um, that was probably the one area then that we didn't really cover. But so it was just a um, kind of a classic field day event here. Um, you can see the tents and everything out here, and the, the drainage was going in. I'll just show you some events. As I said, we had about five different pieces um, of equipment and vendors come in just showing their wares and how their equipment puts it in on site. Um, it's kind of a pretty exciting field day for me to do. I haven't worked with that large of equipment. Um, and it's really fun to do a field day when you have a bunch of guys with big equipment. You can accomplish just about anything you want to accomplish. We built new driveway, did everything. So it, it's really cool to work with those. Showed the actual installation of mains and laterals, and um, just, this just continued all day long so um, producers and, and contractors come out. Some nice equipment of how to fill the, the uh, trenches back in. So um, it was a fairly good field day. Again, we had to have a pretty good chunk of land to accomplish this so they could, uh, could run through it. And like I said, the weather did cooperate. Unfortunately, we uh, did not have rain for it, but we hadn't had rain for a long time. So this is just kind of the, the general lay of the land out there. 
Some other things we showed, there was a demonstration of uh, a vendor who has a uh, piece of equipment that you can run some tubing up the tire lines, and then he had a, a remote sensor with GPS on it so that we can find lines. Um, in my area, we have a lot of small little potholes that they just drain those and they don't do the whole field. Could have been put in, Grandpa could have put them in, somebody else could have put them in. You know, we really don't know where all those are. So just showing some tracking methods to go find where all that drainage, uh, old drainage might be. Again, I wanted to focus on prevention out there. Um, one of the things, um, we started with them with the rates and calibration, reiterated that, again, that the agronomic rate usually works for solid manures. When it comes to a very liquid stream, we may need to consider some other opportunities out there. Cover crops is something that's getting highly uh, talked about. Um, we did spring seed, frost seed, some cover crops, which had pretty marginal success because of the dry weather, but we did have just a little bit there to show. We also, Dr. Tim Harrigan from Michigan State University has a slurry seeding method where he puts cover crop seed directly in every tank of manure and runs it back through a low disturbance uh, tillage system. In this system, it's an airway system, which just pokes holes through the field, and as you put a very liquid manure on, um, it pretty much just runs to the holes, just like gravity says it should do. Um, so that is one way to just get it in the ground and do some uh, soil um, incorporation of this. The, this piece of tillage equipment can be set more aggressively to do a little more um, a tillage than just poking holes. Probably more of a runoff tool, uh, but something we wanted to talk about. Again, it depends on the farmer's soil type and their options um, and, and what might work for them. With tillage, we're, um, I think tillage is one of those things that seems quite common sense to me that um, if you've looked at the drainage issue, the better quality soil, that really nice no-till soil with all the worm channels and the no disturbance that, that is, is the goal we all want to achieve, then can be such a good drainage system that gravity takes over and a liquid manure can get to the drains because that, that system is does have macropores from, from dying root systems where there was no tillage conducted and, um, and worm channels. So um, tillage, I think, is one of the things that the conservation uh, people don't want to talk about because we want to stick with that no-till and we don't want to give it up at all costs. Again, you need to consider your ultimate goal. If you're having trouble with that, you know, a little bit of tillage would probably be a very easy solution ahead of manure applications to reduce a very large threat. Now we also have lots and lots of new types of tillage out there too. I told people that I could solve the tile drain uh, issue, we just need to go back to mobile board plowing and anhydrous. You smoke the worms, you break the channels, we can do that. that that's an option. Okay? We don't want to go there. Fortunately, we have a lot of new um, tillage equipment out there that farmers are pretty excited about. They still do um, have other reasons to run a piece of tillage equipment, so we wanted to show those. We worked with the local dealers then. We have a Salford dealer, John Deere, Landau, and Coon Krauss out there. We actually ran them in the field so they could see them. Some of them just barely cut up residue. That's about all they really do. So then people will say, well, that won't do anything for odor. That's not disrupting the soil. Okay? Depends on the, the farmer's needs out there. And maybe if they don't have drainage, it works well for them. Other tools can be, be run much more aggressively and do a lot more disturbance. And if we need to do this to reduce that risk of a liquid manure reaching the tile line, then this may be an option for those producers. School. And of course, this is very, very soil uh, dependent. I did hear Hard. one of the participants of the vet walk over this and say, well, this will never work on my soil. Well, that's probably true. Um, so there are options out there in your soil types and your systems, and if this is something you need to look into, um, there are certainly options out there to do that. But the goal is to break the macropores up enough that we could get a liquid manure on there at an appropriate rate to work. So we ran them in the fields. Like I say, we're in the middle of a drought, so it was a little dusty day out there. So that was some of the prevention things. Then we want to look at some of the newer technology, the water control devices and um, we'll be talking about those in, in detail, a future speaker here. Installing these devices such that you can back the water up in the tile drains, um, you could stop that, you could put on a late summer manure application, and if your soil conditions were such that uh, um, liquid 
waste stream was reaching the drainage system, you could stop that, hold it, and let the, um, the liquids assimilate back into the soil. Um, so sometimes these are, are going to be important to install. And of course, our day was showing the proper design and installation of these sorts of things. We did put them, install them right on site that day. Another presentation you hear after I'm done is a constructed bioreactor at the end of the tile drainage system, the outlet, to actually construct a bark bioreactor to, um, again, filter that before it's released um, from another exit point. And this was constructed on site that day, and they could see that. And we'll have a greater presentation on that in a minute. Another system, we brought a few farmers in to talk about their systems. We have a unique system in southeast Michigan of a completely contained system of wash water, waste stream, can be sub-irrigated out. Um, when we let the um, drainage then go, it comes back to the ditches and it comes back to constructed wetlands. And it's a totally contained system um, that we can sub-irrigate during the season when we need it. When we want to get it off, we can let um, the control devices go, drain that field to do our field work, but the drainage stays contained back in a closed loop system. And I'm thinking after the drought, the whole concept of sub-irrigation might be of a little more interest in the future. Um, and that is another step beyond just using the water control devices, but another um, way of designing it, installing it, and managing it based on your soil types and what's going on out there. Um, so we looked at general management. We used farmer panels. As I said, I didn't have the expertise to teach this, and actually our university doesn't uh, have a cadre of uh, drainage experts either. Um, so I just looked around and, and found other people around the Midwest that are very good experts and had them come in and, and speak at these presentations to bring that information to us. As you know, in extension, we can't have every researcher and everything researched in our own state anymore, and we do need to share these experiences um, out there and across the, the area. Um, and in looking at this, I guess I liken this again, the, the moral of the presentation is not to wait around for the right answer. Um, can you think of any more dynamic system than the interaction of soil types, the soil moisture on any given moment, and what the weather is going to do, you know, 24 hours after you apply the manure, or even a month later, what's going to happen? So I, I think there's people that probably want to get this matrix and this tool that will help in the decision of farmers. Um, but I think that if we could just bring more awareness of some common sense things to the producers, um, they could kind of do that 80-20 rule and maybe take care of 80% of the problem before we can figure out the other 20%. And I learned that from a farmer a long time ago, a farmer who has liquid waste stream and drainage system, told me a long time ago that his neighborhood knew they were having a problem. They got in their pickups, they drove around, they checked their outlets, if they felt they weren't um, holding all that manure stream in the, water, in the soil, they adjusted their practices accordingly. And again, they understood gravity, they understood their soil types, and they understood their goal. And when they could see it right on their own farm, knowing it was their actions, they also could go back and change their actions, whether it be tillage, whether it be reduced rates, whether it be multiple applications. Um, if we can bring that awareness to the producers, um, I think we can, can get there fairly succinctly. So I liken this a little bit to the P-Index. I've been watching the P-Index development for quite a few years. And I think they're struggling with this exact thing of all the iterations of any, and now they're trying to find a P-Index for the whole nation. And we know that everybody sitting in this room has a very different picture of what they think their agricultural land looks for. And here we're dealing with that on a surface issue where we can see it. So now we want to figure out how to take care of things we can't see below the surface. Um, but I do think there's, um, that we can begin to do that and work with our producers to, to learn together and follow the research on that. So that was just the beginning of this. Um, we do now have, though, people that do have scientific background on this, and we will um, move on to our next presentations to talk about that. I'm glad to have um, Dr. Matt Helmers, Associate Professor um,